What's up guys, it's Trick Sykes, and we're at the BVS Central Layout. And uh, first I wanna say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, you know, have a good day tomorrow. Enjoy the day with your kids and your family. And so I just wanted to do a quick update on some of the things I've been doing on the layout and um, a couple of purchases. Uh, so I guess first off, I wanna start off with uh, I bought Tidy Track and uh, I purchased a couple of ready to roll Athlon units that I think uh, were ran, not heavily ran, but ran. And the wheel sets were kind of dingy, um, dark color. So I basically, um, I was having some issues with the, in, the logos cutting out on track and I wasn't having an issue with my Genesis unit. So I bought a tight track to clean and scrub the wheel sets. Um, and with that and just doing a little bit better cleaning um, and maintenance of the track and you know, just learning that stuff with this being my first layout, it's, uh, they're running a lot better. Um, still wanna try a couple of cleaning techniques that uh, the homie Taki suggested. So I'm going to try those in the near future. Um, I guess second, I wanna go over uh, my engine facility and that's gonna be the first uh, scene that I really focus on and get to a done state before I move on to something else. So on the in the facility I laid, um, I poured the concrete and used Woodland Scenics um, Smooth It for that. And I know it's, you know, plenty of other ways you can do it. I posted pictures and others have suggested other things, but I chose to go with what, um, Smooth It because I just felt it was convenient at the time with, um, I'm only gonna really have three areas on the layout that I have to use concrete or simulate concrete, and that would be the engine facility, um, a road that is kind of between the um, scrap yard and lumber yard, and then a road between that will run from the propane tank to the back to the back wall and then go to the concrete facility and go to RAF um, packing. So the Woodland Scenics is, it worked. It came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, gonna paint soon. And um, I started my fence for the engine facility. Um, used some copper, some brass, I should say, some brass rod, um, 0 0.032, point, which is 0 0.81 millimeters. Uh, I bought this a couple different places so far, uh, AA Hobbies and a site online, which I don't know the link at this point right now as I record this. But yeah, so that worked out cool. Um, I just have to use the, get the tool on there for the fencing and then paint it. So that's my first big chunk of fence. I've gotten a lot better with my soldering, um, with uh, changing some products over getting some solder that had resin core and getting a better flux. So that's helped a lot with my soldering. And um, so what I also wanna talk about too is I got my fascia, started putting fascia up and that has worked out pretty good. I had the pieces cut for a while now. Um, so I did fascia and I got the rods. I started putting the rods in 
for the bullfrogs. And um, so I have to put together, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have to put two more together. Um, so I have eight more bullfrogs I have to do. But so directly behind me, there's three. And then on this panel, there's two. There's two switches right here. And then behind me on this part of the layout, there's three. Um, so putting those, putting the face in isn't a hard thing, but just running those rods and getting them correct, the length correct to screw into the 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 threads on the on the bolt that goes into the the mechanism on the bullfrog is like kind of tedious. You got to get it right. Um, and on this panel under there is the this is the biggest section of the layout, the most deepest. So I had to use some um, supports that I bought from um, that I bought with the bullfrogs and they just stick down and have some holes on each side and then they help support it so it doesn't wobble um, when you push it in and out. The next thing I wanted to go over was, uh, so <clears throat> with the, those, the Athen Ready to Roll models, locos that I got, I wanted to do wild sound and um, had a bit of an issue with that where um, I had uh, Jason, I sent the locals to Jason to have him put them in for me because I never really did that and soldering the speakers and what have you. So what I did was I sent them to him, um, he put them in, he sent them back. We had a couple of issues with one um, speaker size in the uh, in the switcher in the twelve in the SW fifteen hundred switcher. We had speaker size issues. Then in the GP thirty eight, um, we had issues with. The decoder actually had issues with the decoder in both models. Uh, issue in the switcher, the cap that comes with the non keep alive wild sound that popped, so I think that kind of affected something and it just didn't run right. And then in the GP, I was having issues with the sound, um, sound levels kind of in both was kind of messed up so what i did was i sent those decoders back um looked at what jason did to kind of figure out how you know learn how to do the soldering and of the speaker and all that so i sent those decoders back got they replaced the two decoders i then also gutted the switcher's interior of the cab and put a uh, I put a sugar cube speaker in there, and then I bought a Keep Alive for that decoder after the fact. Um, so I had to say, sugar cube speakers sound really, really, really good. Um, and in the GP38 is a wild sound oval speaker and it's good. I had to turn that one. I had to turn both of them slightly down. Um, I haven't really, really, really tuned in on them and turned them, get the levels right. I've turned, I've turned breaking sounds up. They were kind of low. Um, so I guess let's get it right into it. Also, I'm running the JMRI on the layout and uh, we'll start it up. As you can hear, uh, a few different locos chiming in right now. So I'll turn that one off. 
That was a GP38-2W Athens Genesis. Right now you hear the GP38 ready to roll. And I'm gonna bring that one forward. So these are the two ready to roll models that I was talking about. I have uh, also two more uh, SD7, SD40s, dash twos that I'm going to eventually do a while in those two. Um, but yeah, so that was JMRI.